All right, guys. Uh, welcome back to another Nerd Enthusiast podcast uh, and video. Uh, today, we're going to tell you about great sponsors. We've got to make sure that we let you know about them and please support them. They support us and it keeps us going. TheSlotSquad.com. You can go check them out. I stream on there. A couple other guys stream on there now. We've just uh, basically doubled the amount of slot streamers we have on that site. Um, and we do casino games every night. We do poker, video poker, craps now. We've done all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, on there, you can watch live, you can ask questions, and they have some of the best deposit bonuses for literally any legal state. And I feel like every day I wake up now, there's like another legal state. They're like, oh, yeah, there's sports betting over here. Yeah. So we have all the sign-up bonuses for all those sites. So stop by theslotsquad.com, twitch.tv slash theslotsquad. So, yeah, check it out. Thanks, guys. Uh, we, we decided that, you know, last month, by the time you hear this, last month uh, was Gambling Awareness Month, and it would only be fair if we... Did, you know, bring some things to light and make sure that we do cover this because obviously problem gambling is a real thing. Um, March is the official problem gambling awareness month. And I just want to talk about a couple things that people can do. I uh, just, you know, some people don't know these. So I figure we throw them out there. Things that people can do to, you know, control themselves. Because, I mean, there's people that obviously have issues and there's people that need to take control. And I can admit that I personally use some of these limits myself because i want to play responsibly and you can still play responsibly and have fun right it's just a matter of learning to deal with you know how that how you react to certain situations um so some of the things i are mostly online stuff i want to talk about but there are if you think of anything live we can talk about it as well but i know what's cool about the regulated sites that we have in new jersey like for example nerd 88 one of our sponsors you go there you sign up um every New Jersey regulated casino has to have limitations in place that you can self-impose on yourself. Mm -hmm. So, for example, you can put deposit bonuses, uh, deposit limits on your daily, monthly. I do this. I have deposit limits of what I want to spend per day. Yeah. This is also good for bankroll management. Like, if you are playing, like, let's say you're playing poker tournaments and you don't want to spend more than X amount a day, this makes sure you stay in your bankroll range. And you can start off low. Like, even if you put $50 a day or $25 a day and you only want to play $1, $5 tournaments, that is a good thing that they have in place. And I think this is one of the advantages uh, versus some, like, offshore shady sites. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, that you can pretty much do. it. Uh, the other thing that they have in place, uh, lost notifications. If you lose more than 2500 or more, make more than 2500 in deposits um, a month, they let you know that. Uh, the site has to do a pop-up. A lot of the other states are the same ways now. They have to put uh, certain things in place to help you if you need help. Because, I, you know, I, people are that I, you know, obviously in the industry are saying stuff like, you know, it's going to be in every household, and, it's, and that's true. You know, you can play whatever. But my, and we can attest to this sort of, it's easier to walk into a casino under 21 and place a bet. Oh, for sure. Than to do it online. Yeah. Way easier. We grew up around Atlantic City. <laughs> yeah, we went we went to college <laughs> 15 minutes from Atlantic City. I'm not going to say that we did this, but, look, <laughs> but I'm going to say that I know people, hypothetically, uh, yeah. that you could just walk into a casino, place a bet, and no one's saying crap to you. Yeah. Like, if you look around that range, no one's saying anything to you. I'm not saying we did it. I'm just saying it's very, very easy to do it. Online... Try and getting a 19-year-old kid to sign up for a site. Dude, it's it's impossible. Yeah. I don't want to say impossible, but you need your ID. You need your social security number. You need a bank account that matches your ID. It's a pain in the butt to sign up for some of these sites, to tell you the truth. Yeah. They make it a little difficult. Then you need a password. That times you out. So if you don't use it in 10 minutes or whatever, it's not like your son could walk in the room 10 minutes later and be like, oh, what's dad doing? Okay, I want to log into his account. After 10 minutes, it re-puts you out. you got to re-sign back in. So a lot of those things, I think, are good. Um, to help with problem gambling, underage gambling, because that's obviously an issue, you know, with a lot of people. The other thing, too, that they do, and this is going back, you know, pre, I would say, legalization, you know, or whatever. Black, pre -black well, yeah, Friday. Like, yeah, pre-Black Friday. Like, they made it, and they still do make it very difficult to withdraw funds out of your account because they have that verification system in place. Like you said, you have to show that you are who you are and you have to, you know, 
provide documentation to them to say like, look, I am, you know, Anthony Scali or I am, you know, whoever it is that you're claiming to be. And sometimes it's not like you can be who you are. And it's like, dude, I just want my money, man. Like they make it, they make it difficult even for the person that it really is. And I know a lot of people complain about that because they're like, dude, how come I can't get my money off? Like, this is crazy. But that's because of, of the number of people that, do set up fraudulent accounts or attempt to, and then, you know, it just, it like, it stops money laundering and yeah. taking money in and out. You know, there's a lot of things that have to be put in place for that. Uh, the other good things they have on there. I wrote down some notes here from, uh, something that I wrote down player time limits, which is nice. Now you got to remember though, if you're in a tournament, if you have like a three hour player time limit for your day, um, you know, you might be in a tournament longer than three hours. So you want to make sure you know what you're playing if you're going to put a player time limit on yourself. But that's great for cash games or if you're just playing some slots or, like, gambling or, like, whatever. Those player time limits are good, you know, so you don't kind of turn, uh, you know, one-hour session into 15 hours, yeah. 17 hours, and it's, like, an all-day. Uh, the other thing, too, the last thing we'll kind of talk about just to touch on, well, two things, self-exclusion. Okay, so you got to know this. With New Jersey, at least, self-exclusion means everything across the board. Mm-hmm. They take it super, super serious. Uh, I have someone I, I put in there. I, I'm not going to mention their name. They self-excluded from an online site, thinking they were self-excluding from just the online site. But it's all the online sites are run by the Casino Control Commission in New Jersey. So you get banned from all the casinos for a one-year term uh, and all the online sites for a one-year term. Yep. So you got to realize that and that people go, oh, so what, I self-exclude. If you self-exclude and you get caught in a casino, they can actually charge you for trespassing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So to piggyback off that, and we talked about this on a previous pod, a friend of mine, you know, he did the right thing. He found himself gambling outside his means, and he he put himself on a, a self-exclusion list. And then after a certain, certain period of time passed – he attempted to like say, "Hey, look, you know, I'm I'm ready to come back and play. Can I come back and play?" And this particular site, again, I don't want to put any details out. Yeah, this yeah. particular site was like, "No." Really? And then he waited an even longer period of time and then attempted a second time and they're like, "No." Done, really. So so he his self-exclusion has has resulted in Lifetime like ban. a permanent ban. And, wow. he, and the thing is, is he's not pressing the issue because of what you're saying. He doesn't want to press the issue, so then he's then excluded from going other places, other places, and the live places. Like, so yeah. he's taking on the chin. Like, all right, cool. You know, it sucks. I can't play on this particular site, but I'm not. I don't want to raise too many flags because then I don't want to get banned from these these like brick and mortar places. Yeah, yeah. No, I understand. Uh, so anyway, just to wrap that up. Like I said, we just wanted to kind of touch on that. Uh, if you do need help, 1-800-GAMBLER. Uh, you can also Google 1-800-GAMBLER as well. There are places. Uh, and listen, there's no shame of, like, getting help. You know, I know we obviously talk about it. But, like, I my whole thing is, like, you. M- my role is you never bet the mortgage payment, right? Like, you never bet the car payment. Like, you have an extra 100 bucks, extra 200 bucks a week, and it's just your, you know, fun money. Because I always say it like this, too. And I always, you know, I obviously promote poker and things like that. You can play responsibly, have a lot of fun, and still be a losing player. It, it happens for some a lot a lot of people, right? They can be <laughs> they can be losing players and still have a good time. But like, here's the thing, though, right? How many guys out there or girls go golfing, right, and spend hundreds of dollars on? And some, yeah, it's the, a hobby to some people. It's if it's a hobby, that's fine because you're not like if you're going out there, you're not going to make the pro golf team. You're not getting any money back. Yep. You're constantly just putting money out the door and. So if that if poker is your thing and you're losing a little bit of money, it's not the end of the world as long as you're doing it responsibly. If it's your extra yeah. excess luxury cash, have fun. But if you start betting the car payments, start betting the rent, trying to pay for the groceries, seriously, that's when you got to be like, listen, I need some help. I need to tune it down. I need to call someone. So if that is you, don't be embarrassed. Please go get help. Um, some live things, though, just real quick. Yeah. We touched on the online things. and I know that you've practiced this. Um, and we'll end it at this. If 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 you do plan on going once once things kind of lift and everything's back to a seemingly normal state, and you do plan on going, um, leave your debit cards That's, at home. Yeah, it's my number one, man. And always put that emergency cash in your car. Don't have it on you. So like, if you know 
you're going to need money to leave the casino and maybe get a, a tank of gas on the way home, leave that cash in your car, be responsible, and bring the only cash that you're going to gamble for that particular day. I have seen people hit the ATM five, six times during a session and are in a game $1,500 more than they intended to be only because they had the means to do it. If you yeah. don't give yourself the means. The opportunity, yeah. Y- you know what? Look, yeah, you could always go get a marker, credit line, or what. Like, I get it. You can. But that's a lot more difficult than yeah, going instant, to the ATM, like, boom. Hit, boom, 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 did the thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's that's something that I've practiced. I know you've practiced it. I always it. just carry um, cash. Yep. And then the other thing I do, too, is, like, you need a car to check in if you're staying at a hotel. If me and him are staying together, I literally check in, pay for the hotel. I give him my card, and I say, don't give me this back till we leave. <laughs> yeah, you I do that. It. But see, here's the thing. I know me, and I know my responsible limits, and I want to be responsible. And so I know. I only carry so much cash, and when I'm going to the actual thing, I leave the rest you know, in the safe or whatever, and I only carry what I need. Now, now I'm piggybacking off that story. I'm not going to mention any names, but we have a friend who did this in Vegas, and I thought this was a genius. He got cashier's checks. Do you remember this? No. Okay. Mushy, right? (laughs) So our buddy Mush, shout out to Mush. I won't say his real name. He got cash. This was kind of genius. He knew what he wanted to spend every day out in Vegas. We were out there for like a week, right? He came out the one time with us. He got cashier's checks made for each day. I don't remember that. For a set amount. (laughs) So every morning he had to go cash in his cashier check because it was only for that day. So he had a limit, but it's, it's, that's, he had to buy all those souvenirs. It's responsible. (laughs) It's responsible gaming. He knew what he wanted to spend every day. That was his limit. He put them in cashier's checks and they're all set each day. That's what he could play for it. Mike was, or sorry, (laughs) mushy, mushy Mike. He would be the guy that was like the tourist. Like we went out there. He had like beads on his neck. He had to get like (laughs) the shirt, the shirt. He had to get like the frilly drink from this one place. And he was, he remember he did the oxygen bar. We're like, dude, what are you doing? Yeah. But he's like great to be with. Oh, total tourist. Love it. Yeah. I don't remember the cashier's checks, though. But, yeah. hey, that's uh, listen. <laughs> it's he, he knows Smart. his vices, and it's and it's good. It's good. You can take control. 